Okay, class, today we're going to talk about telling stories with numbers. Because one of the things that you're going to have to do in Social Work 300 is you're going to have to take numbers and translate that or put that into information that anyone can understand quite simply, even yourself. When you're reading tables, as we will with uh, census.gov, you need to read the tables very carefully. The title will usually tell you exactly what is in the table. And when you create tables, APA style tables, or whatever, you need to make sure that your title is clear so people understand, people who read what you're writing about, understand exactly what you're talking about. So this table tells you about students who reported carrying a weapon from the years 1995 to 2005. Look at the headers and the footers for other explanations of the title. Just because the title tells you this is talking about data or survey information that was question, that was collected uh, about students from students in grades 9 through 12 who reported carrying a weapon, um, you may need to get, want to know a little bit more information. So if you read the headers and footers, it usually will give you uh, additional information. It, makes the table a little more clear for you to understand. You need to also be willing to evaluate the source of your data. Is it reliable? Is it up to date? Census.gov, CDC, Centers for Disease Control. Government sites are typically uh, accurate. Um, when you start using other websites or other sources of information of your data, you need to really look at and evaluate is that information accurate? Study your columns. And remember, columns are like columns on a building. They go up and down, and rows go across. Study your column and row headings. What do they mean? In this particular slide, it shows you that columns is talking about the year, uh, and row is talking about either the other variables, the person's sex, or their race, or what grade they were in. If the data are percentages, you need to understand how it can add up to 100%. Some tables will not add up to 100% down or across. Sometimes researchers, this is done to save space, and some charts may omit some data. Make sure when you're turning in and submitting assignments for me, yours need to add up to 100% unless you have something really rare going on, but I'll assist you with that. You need to describe some of the numbers in words. And this is a way you can write out a sentence. For example, put the number, whatever percentage of whatever, in the row or column heading. What do I mean by that? If I were looking at this particular data chart, and I'm not quite sure what you're viewing this on or how you could, how well you can see it, but 29.8% of students who reported carrying a weapon in 2005 are male. Now, remember, in just talking about uh, this data at this point in time, obviously you don't start a sentence with a numeral. Um, I did for the purposes of this example to explain to you how you would take a number of a percentage and uh, explain that by looking at the row or column heading. So once again, if we looked in the co one of the columns, 29.8% uh, of students who reported carrying a weapon in 2005 are male. Sometimes when you're looking at these tables, population numbers are given in thousands. So you need to remember that means millions. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but obviously when you start using millions, you know, that's a whole lot of numbers to put on a page. But so just keep it simple. Also, when you're reading tables, data tables, look for patterns. What is the range? You know, what year to what year? What is the largest percentage? What is the smallest percent? Are most of the cases concentrated in one category or are they more evenly spread out? And once you have your data and you start looking at your numbers, that will help you to write uh, your analysis of that data. Tables are logic, are, are excuse me, are really logic, are really about logical relationships. 
Each cell in a table locates a sentence. So how should we read our tables? Well, by the rows. You're going to read your tables by rows. So then maybe it begins to make sense to see what other sentences can be generated by comparing columns and rows. And if at this point in the video presentation you don't understand what I'm talking about at all, I strongly suggest and hope that you attended class the day that I talked about this. But if you didn't, or even if you did, um, just pause the video at this time and go back and review what you missed. If you still have questions, make sure you ask. So if we were to read this, uh, once again, coming from the other example, if we said 29.8% of the students who reported carrying a weapon in the years 1995 to, excuse me, in 2005, 29.8% of those students were male. Um, and also to be a little more specific, 29.8% of students who reported carrying a weapon in 2005 were male reported that percentage, um, that, that percentage came up saying they were carrying a weapon anywhere. Now, when it came down to looking at 2005 students who reported carrying a weapon um, on school property, only 10.2% of students um, are, are, who were male were indicating that they were carrying a weapon on school property. So you see there's some differences there and, you know, that's subject to interpretation on how you explain why 29.8% uh, were carrying weapons anywhere, but only 10.2% were carrying weapons on school property. But we'll discuss that in class or you can ask me or email me, whatever works for you. Now, some rules for writing numbers, and I'm going to go through this rather quickly because I'm sure you're getting tired right about now. Um, but actually, if you are, why don't you just pause the video, um, go get a snack and come sit down and come back. Okay, you're back. <laughs> so rules for writing with numbers. Um, one trick in writing a summary paragraph or abstract that I tell students, and this makes your life a whole lot easier as well as mine. Um, a four sentence paragraph is, is acceptable for my class. Um, if you're doing data collection and you've written worked on different sections of your, your paper. If you just pull one sentence from uh, each major part of your paper, paper, you would have a nice four sentence summary or abstract or, or a really nice paragraph that summarizes uh, what your report is all about. And remember, since I am asking, uh, I do require that students use APA style, um, you're going to need an abstract. So this is the easiest and simplest way to write it without um, hurting your brain. And a quick overview about numbers when you're writing them. Uh, write out numbers beginning sentences. 6% of the group fail, not 6% of the group fail. And you can see that in this example. Uh, use a combination of figures and words for your numbers, uh, and that'll help keep your writing clear. Um, if you read the two sentences here, um, you'll see that... Um, you know, one sentence is more clear than the other. And in addition to having this video available for you, this video lecture available for you online, I'll also try to post this particular um, PowerPoint for those of you who are interested in um, reading it a little more up close and personal. Numbers should be in series and statistics. They should be consistent. Two apples, six oranges, and three bananas. Not two apples, six oranges, and three bananas. You get the idea. Large or round numbers, um, you can do that. It's okay. Four billion dollars or four billion. Well, uh, here's also some rules. There's actually 16 of these rules for writing numbers. I'm going to go through them super briefly. But at the end of this slide, I've given you um, the link to this, these two particular websites where um, I obtained this information from. And you can certainly go. feel free to go to it and check it out for yourself. Spell out your single digit whole numbers. Be consistent within your categories. Always spell out simple fractions and use hyphens with them. One half of the pies or a two thirds majority is required for that bill to pass in Congress. Mixed fractions can be expressed in figures unless it is the first word of a sentence. The simplest way to express large numbers is best. Write decimals and figures. Put a zero in front of a decimal unless the de decimal itself begins with a zero. With numbers that have decimal points, use a comma only when the number has five or more digits before the decimal point. Um, dates. 
uh, when expressing decades, you can spell them out. If you wish to express decades using incomplete numerals, put an apostrophe. You can also express decades in numerals. Um, spell out the time of day. Use numerals with the time of day when exact times are being emphasized or use a.m. or p.m. Use noon and midnight rather than 12 p.m. and 12 a.m. Everybody gets confused on that. Hyphenate all compound numbers and write out a number if it begins a sentence. That's really important. So often I see students write a sentence beginning with a numeral. Nope, write it out. So these are my sources of information that you can feel free to utilize, download, put copies of this information in your notebook. Um, other than that, um, I've tried to keep this little video lecture as brief as I could, but this one was pretty long. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, make sure and feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.